We previously talked about server actions and how to use them in the app router. We've used them for handling form submissions. We've also used them to query data, to search data used for pagination or, or even implementing infinite scroll. So if you haven't watched those videos or you're not very comfortable with what server actions are, I'm going to include the link um, in the description or in the card somewhere so you can watch those first to understand what server actions are. And then come to this video where we're going to use the use form state, which is a hook from React to set some state depending on the result of a form submission or a form action. So we're going to combine our server actions in a form and we're going to use the use form state um, to then handle errors or handle the state of our page or our app using the use form state. Now here, I'll demonstrate what this would look like at the end. So as you can see, I have a simple form here with a name and a message. If I go ahead and submit this form, I have the pending state. We're going to also look at the use form status hook for this pending state. Uh, and this is going to give me a validation error because name is required, message is required. But if I do provide some name here, it is going to return some data back. Now, I'm not doing any mutation specifically in the server, in the server action. I'm just returning the data after I have parsed or validated the data. But that part, you get the idea. You can talk to a database or whatever mutation you're, you're um, intending to do. Um, but this is the final version that we're going to build together. So let's jump right in and see what we're working with. So let's just start by looking at our project from a high level. It's a brand new Next.js app using TypeScript tell me CSS and obviously the app router. And all I had done so far is to remove the boilerplate code that comes out of running the script. I have replaced the content of my homepage with this section and this form. And this form is basically rendering the form that you can see in the browser here with two inputs for the name and the message, a submit button, and then an area, which is this blue area where we would eventually render the result of our form submission. I've also installed Zod for our schema validation. So I have this lib folder where I've defined my form data schema. This should have a name of type string and a message. Okay, so now let's go back to our form and see how we would implement the form actions using server actions and this new use form state. So use form state is a hook, as I mentioned, from React that allows you to update state based on the result of a form action. So let's look at this structure here. You need to pass in a server action to it or a function and some initial state. And this is going to return to you the final state or the current state after this action is performed and then the form action, which you can actually pass in to your form. So if you look at down here, it explains that you pass to this an existing form action and possibly an initial state. It returns a new action that you could use in your form alongside with the latest form state. In this form state is whatever is returned from your server action. And that's how we can also use this state for error handling because we can return um, serializable objects from our server actions. And if we encounter any error inside of our server action, we can just return it. It will be set to this state. Now, this state will initially be this initial state that you're passing in here. So if I show it here, this state would initially, before the form submission, would be this initial state. But after the form submission, this is going to be whatever you're returning from server action, your server action. And that server action is what you're passing in here. We're going to see this in action if it doesn't make sense, but bear with me. So that was the structure. And as an example here, you can see that they have this increment, which is a function or an action they're passing in here, an initial state for zero. And then this is returning a form action that you could use on a form or 
on a form action attribute on a button, and then the state. Again, the state initially would be zero, so this is going to show zero. After we submit or increment this, it's going to call this function, it's going to increment our state, and then it's going to return this. Now this new return state from our action is going to be this state, which is going to uh, be shown down here. Now this example is just pure React. It's not Next.js, it's not using server components, it's not using a server action. But if you scroll down in the page, you can actually see that this function we pass in here can be a server action, which in turn is going to allow us to set states and handle errors um, on our forms when we're using server actions to handle form submissions. So I'm going to leave this to you to read uh, the rest of the docs here. You can uh, also actually go to Next.js documentation for server actions, uh, which is what was stabilized in Next.js 14. So the only change from Next.js 14 to 13 was that server actions are now stable. Uh, the documentation is complete. You could read through the convention of defining server actions, how to use them, how to invoke them from server components, from client components using the start transition and whatnot. I also mentioned that I have a dedicated video for server actions where I dive deep into this. Uh, so I'm going to include the link in the description. So if you're not comfortable with that, definitely watch that video. Now at the end of this page, there is also uh, another kind of piece of documentation for forms and mutations and some links to these hooks that we just talked about, the use form state and the use form status. We're going to use both inside of our app to handle form submission and also the pending state inside these forms and mutations. It also talks about revalidating data, redirecting, displaying loading state, and also handling errors. So let's go back to our application and actually start by defining a server action. So the first step is I would like to create a file here inside of my app called underscore actions.ts where we would actually mark this as use server so this is going to be marked whatever function you export now from this file is going to be your server actions so i'm going to export an async function here let's call this add entry let me close this off so we have more room now this is going to receive two parameters the first parameter is the state that same state that's returned from the use um, form state let's type this any and then we're going to get the form data which is of type form data okay now the first thing that I want to do here is to parse this data that's coming back so result I'm going to say form data schema this is the schema we just looked at together and I'm going to save parse this and I'm going to say this needs to be a name form data dot get name because this is what I called my input in the form and then form data dot get message okay now this result is going to either have an error on it so if result dot success we're going to actually return an object that has data and then we're going to access the result of data and if we are having an error here well we're going to return an object that has the error set to going to use some parse formatting from Zod to actually format this error object now once this parse is successful and by the way i'm using the safe parse this doesn't throw an error so the difference between the safe parse in zod or parse is that the safe parse does not throw an error you can just handle the cases here instead of throwing it you can just uh, wrap this inside of a try catch and then let this be parsed to throw an error and then inside your catch you can return this um, whichever way works better for you but once this is successful assuming that our data is uh, valid to do is to perform any desired action slash mutation 
This is where you would talk to the database, perform any action or mutation to create a new entry, to update an entry or to delete an entry, and then revalidate the cache to actually reflect that data mutation or change inside of, our, inside of your page. For the purpose of this tutorial, we're just returning the data back, but you get the idea. So if we have our server action defined, and we want to, inside of our form, we want to handle the form submission using the server action instead of the traditional way of having a handle submit and an API layer to handle this form submission. So let's bring in this user state, use form state that we just looked at together. So I'm going to say const state. This is going to return also a form action. I'm going to call the use form state from React DOM. And by the way, this is from React DOM, not React, just so you know. And here I'm going to just pass in my add entry server action we created together, and I'm going to initialize our state to null. Okay, now down here again, let me just comment this out. I am just showing this state, whatever that comes back from our add entry server action down here, whether it's the data we submitted, if we parsed it and if it was successful, or the error. Now to hook this up with our form, we're going to pass in an action prop and we're going to set this to form action. Now, as you can see here, we encountered an error because we are using a hook and this needs a client component. So we need to mark this component as a client component. So use client directive up top. And now with that, our form should actually work. So let's go ahead and submit. As you can see, this submitted and returned some error. It is telling me that the name is required and the message is also required. And if I go ahead and actually put in some name and message, this time it actually returns the data back. Let's review what happened one more time. So we use this use form state. It's a new hook from React. Actually, you have to export it or import it from React DOM. This allows you to update some state in response to a form action. You would pass your server action to this. This is going to return the state, the current state, or the state after the submission, and some form action function you can actually pass to the action prop of your form. This server action, just to quickly look at it, parse our data, perform whatever mutation, revalidate the path or the tag if needs be, and then returns some data back. Either this was successful and does whatever we intended to do or returns some error. We are using this same state, which is the return result or that object that's returned from our server action to show our state down here. Now you can use that error object to actually show error states right underneath this inputs, like the traditional way of showing error messages in a form, but you'll get the idea. Okay, so we submitted our form and implemented error handling all using this use form state and our server action. Now, the last thing I want to show is the pending state. So when this form is being submitted, we can disable this button or disable the user from submitting the form again while this is in process. For that, we're going to use a different hook. It's called use form status. So let's just also look at that as well. This is going to give you the status of a parent form. It's going to give you the pending if it is being submitted, the data that was passed to the form action, the method that was used to actually submit this form, and the a reference to the form action that was actually passed to this form, to the parent form. Now, the only caveat that you need to know really is you cannot read the status of the form in the same level as where this hook is called. This is going to give you the status of the form or, or a parent form. Therefore, we need to actually extract this button into a submit button like so, and then pass it to the form down here so that it can give you the status of this parent form. If you're calling this inside the same or at the same level component, this pending would always be false because it cannot hook into the status of a form at the same level. So therefore, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to bring in this submit button where I am 
actually using this use form status. Let's also import that from React DOM. And then I'm going to replace this button that we have here with this button I just created here. We should be able to see the pending state. Now, let me just explain what I'm doing here. So I'm getting the form status, hooking into the status of the parent form. If it is pending, I'm disabling this button and showing a different text here. Pretty straightforward. Let's go back to our action and actually delay this process for a second. So set a wait and you promise. That just delays this for one second uh, so that we can actually see that pending state in action. Let me just refresh the app here. If I now submit, you can see that button went into a pending state before returning the result. And again, if I actually provide some message over here, same thing happens, but this time we get the data back. And that's a wrap for this video, folks. We implemented form submission or form actions using server actions and this new use form state hook that takes in our server action and returns a form action that we can pass into our form, but also allows us to set some state in response to that form action. It can be a success or it can be an error. So it also helps us to handle errors inside of our form. And we also looked at the use form status hook, which is going to hook into the status of the parent form. It is going to give us the data, the action, the method, and also the pending state when the form is actually being submitted. So we can implement pending state inside of our form. If you have any questions, like always, hit me up in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.